everyone to another review by Fat Ninja Studios. I'm your host, Jackie Kay, and today we are unwrapping 8-Bit Christmas. Before we begin, please give this video a like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to check that bell icon to stay up to date with our latest releases. Spoiler warning ahead. The film begins with Christmas ads spewing out their holiday joys and shopping extravaganzas. We pick up in modern day, Neil Patrick Harris walking with his daughter, getting ready to visit family for the holidays, and doing some last minute gift buying. His daughter though is not really in the Christmas spirit, especially since she's not getting the phone that she wanted. They arrive at his mom's house early and it seems like no one is home yet. So he busts out his old NES and this is the catalyst for the story of the entire film. Think a Christmas story, but replace the Red Ryder BB gun with a Nintendo. We cut back to the 80s when Neil was a kid, heading to a local kid's house with his friends to play his Nintendo. Every weekend, he would take a handful of kids to let into his basement to play, and it's a big event. Often this kid would hog his own system, making the other kids simply watch him play, and this puts in motion the need for Neil to get his own. His parents are staunchy against video games, thinking that they are too violent and will cause their children to be abnormal. He begins by getting his mom so busy that she'll just say yes to any request, and she agrees to get him a Nintendo for Christmas. Meanwhile, his dad, a half-baked handyman who's always renovating or trying to construct something, ropes Neil into helping him work on a cabinet. Buttering up his dad with how he wants to build up his hand strength to be able to build things around the house, he suggests a Nintendo system, and his dad agrees enthusiastically. Later that night at dinner though, when he brings up being at his friend's house playing Nintendo all day, it sparks a conversation between his parents, who agree that the Nintendo is bad news. This crushes young Neil. The next day at school, he and his friends find out that Timmy just got the newest Nintendo peripheral, the Power Glove. And even though this thing turns out to be a real piece of shit that doesn't work, the kids don't know that yet and all flock to bribe him with gifts in hopes of being able to try it out. But when Timmy loses to a girl during a bout in a fighting game, he takes it out on the TV, causing it to fall off the stand and crush the family dog. All the kids flee and this signifies the end of Nintendo time at Timmy's. A couple of days later, the kids learn about a contest to sell Christmas wreaths, and the winner gets a limited edition NES system. A swarm of kids hit the neighborhood, selling wreaths everywhere. Concerned with how much Neil is trying to win the Nintendo, his dad relays a story about a time his dad built him a treehouse, and how it was the greatest thing in his childhood life, but Neil doesn't seem to care. He's only got eyes for that sweet NES. Neil's sister comes up with a plan to help him sell more wreaths in exchange for him helping her to make sure she gets a Cabbage Patch doll for Christmas. He agrees and she comes through, leading him to a marathon of wreath selling at a local nursing home. He then goes on an adventure with his dad to find a doll from a street scalper after all the dolls are sold out in major retail stores. At the ranger meeting, the contest has finally come to an end and a winner is announced. Neil, having gone through hell to sell as many wreaths as possible, wins. A set of encyclopedias. Crushing defeat, the kids lose their minds. But fear not, there is still one final plan to get that elusive console. A field trip to Chicago, where a mall nearby still has systems in stock. They sell a bunch of baseball cards to put together enough money, and Neil is chosen as the designated shopper. Neil uses cunning to avoid familiar parents and makes it to the store. He grabs a Nintendo, hands the cashier the money, and finally, he has it. He has one. He uses expert sneak tactics to get back out of the mall and make it back to the field trip bus in time, rushing through the crowds of people. But just as he gets outside, he slips on a patch of ice. The Nintendo goes flying into traffic and is crushed by a bus. That's it. It's over. No Nintendo for anyone. We cut to Christmas morning. Neil and his sister are unwrapping presents. Everyone looks happy with what they're getting except for Neil. 
That night, they're supposed to head to a family dinner, but before they leave, his dad orders him to go pick up the dog poop in the backyard first. Begrudgingly, Neil does as he's told, but suddenly he sees a giant tree fork lit up with all sorts of lights. This is a big project his dad has been working on year round. Neil was blown away and he and his father finally found a meaningful connection. We flash back to modern day as the family is all sitting down for Christmas dinner, wrapping up the moral tale, and Neil and his daughter hang out in the tree fort. Overall, I found this surprisingly entertaining. It isn't a groundbreaking film by any measure, but it's fun. A little goofy, Christmas romp much like older classics such as A Christmas Story or Jingle All the Way. Neil Patrick Harris does awesome as the dad slash narrator of the story, and the kids all do their part throughout the film, trying to get their hands on the brand new Nintendo Entertainment System. There's a good moral at the end of the story, befitting traditional Christmas tales, and even some heartfelt moments delivered unexpectedly by Steve Zahn. Definitely check it out if you're looking for a family-friendly Christmas movie this year that you haven't already seen a thousand times. I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. You can find it streaming currently on HBO Max. I want to thank you all for checking out the video. Please give it a like, share, and subscribe to our channel. You can reach out to us on Twitter at StudiosFat or chat with us on Discord, linked below. Our Patreon is live, also linked in the description below. So please check that out. I've been your host, Jackie K, and before I go, while Christmas is often referred to as a season of giving, you don't have to wait for December to be generous. All year round, people are in need of help, or just a pick-me-up. Surprise someone by giving them a little gift, or helping them with a project, or just doing something kind for them in general. A little positivity in the world never hurt anybody. Thanks again, and as always, take care.